What if a conversation you thought was private was actually being read by strangers in a hidden room? What if strangers met online to trade secrets about you, your contacts, and your devices? What if those rooms were not on any public website, but buried in networks you don't see? Tonight we go inside those hidden chat rooms on the dark web. We will not show how to break anything. We will show how they work, who uses them, and how to protect yourself. The dark web is not one place. It is a set of hidden networks and services. People use special software to reach them. Inside, there are marketplaces and forums. And there are private chat rooms. These chat rooms are private by design. They promise secrecy. They promise anonymity. That promise attracts criminals. It also attracts curious people. Hidden chat rooms can host many kinds of conversations. Some discuss tools and software. Some sell access to stolen accounts. Some coordinate scams and fraud. Some trade leaked data like a commodity. Not every chat room is violent or extreme. Some are technical discussion groups. Some are communities of curiosity. But the most dangerous ones are the ones selling access. Access means many things. A username and password. A remote login, a persistent backdoor. Once bought, the buyer can use it as they please. In these rooms, vendors post listings. They describe what they sell. They attach proof of access. They show screenshots that prove their claims. Buyers ask questions privately. They negotiate payment in cryptocurrency. They ask for guarantees or escrow. Often they use additional encrypted chats to finish the deal. The chatroom culture is built on trust and reputation. Sellers build feedback over time. Buyers insist on reviews. If a seller cheats, their reputation falls fast. That market dynamic makes these rooms efficient. Scammers still exist, but many repeat players are professionals. They run structured operations much like legal businesses. One common topic in these chat rooms is stolen credentials. Lists of email addresses and passwords change hands every day. A list can be worth a few dollars or thousands, depending on the target. Financial accounts, corporate emails, and cloud logins are the most valuable. Another frequent topic is malware and services. Remote access tools, data stealers, and ransomware services appear in posts. Some sellers offer support, updates, and tutorials. They make their products accessible to non-technical buyers. Then there are the coordination rooms. Groups that plan phishing campaigns. Groups that prepare targeted attacks against specific organizations. They break tasks into roles. The lure, the deployer, the money mover. You might think this sounds like a movie. But these are real operations with measurable harm. They cause identity theft, financial loss, and business disruption. Hidden chat rooms also host intelligence sharing. Hackers exchange details about newly discovered vulnerabilities. They discuss which software versions are easy targets. They compare defensive tactics they have bypassed. This is dangerous knowledge when shared without context. Even non-technical tips can be turned into practical attack patterns. That's why we focus on awareness and defense here. How do people join these chat rooms? Some rooms are open to anyone with the right network access. Others require invitations and vetting. Some use multi-step verification and manual screening. Forum posts sometimes advertise room access. A vendor sells an invitation ticket. Buyers pay and receive login details. That lowers the barrier for casual criminals. Inside, many conversations are ephemeral. Messages are deleted after reading. Files have short lifespans. Screenshots get blurred to avoid tracing. The ephemeral nature protects participants. It also makes investigating attacks harder for authorities. Digital trails vanish quickly. The content of hidden chat rooms varies by niche. There are rooms focused on selling access to gaming accounts. Others trade corporate VPN credentials. Some sell access to social media accounts with many followers. Influencer accounts are a surprising commodity. A compromised influencer profile can be used to spread scams widely. Buyers pay more for profiles with large engaged followings. Chat rooms sometimes run auctions. Access bundles sold to the highest bidder. They package thousands of stolen credentials and auction them off. Negotiations can be formal. 
They set terms, deadlines, and escrow arrangements. This level of organization shows the maturity of the underground economy. Trust enforcement is usually community-driven. If a seller scams buyers, a notice circulates. Other sellers refuse to work with the scammer. Reputation networks enforce standards informally. How do participants communicate safely inside these rooms? They use layered encryption. They use throwaway accounts and disposable emails. They avoid linking personal identifiers. Many participants also use VPNs and additional anonymity tools. They compartmentalize their activity across multiple services. This operational security makes tracing more difficult. Yet, operational security is imperfect, mistakes happen. Accounts reuse, sloppy OPSEC, and rushed communications leave traces. Authorities exploit these mistakes to track operators down. Law enforcement has had successes. Several high-profile takedowns began with a single operational error. Those cases often start with an informant or a compromised device. Still, the chat rooms adapt. When a platform is shut down, participants move to new services. They change aliases and rebrand their operations. This cat and mouse game continues. What kind of people use these chat rooms? A broad mix, organized criminals, opportunistic fraudsters, state-affiliated actors, curious onlookers. Organized groups often run the most complex scams. They share profits, standardized tools, and hire specialists. Their operations can rival small businesses in scale. Opportunists rent tools or bots for a few hours. They run quick scams or spam bursts and vanish. State-affiliated actors use private rooms to share intelligence and tools at scale. Curiosity drives a different problem. Some people enter these rooms to learn not to commit crime. They watch conversations and absorb knowledge. That's risky because exposure can normalize criminal methods. Hidden chat rooms are also recruitment hubs. Experienced operators recruit new members. They seek talent with specific skills, social engineering, coding, money laundering. New recruits learn on the job, often by doing small tasks first. This apprenticeship model widens the pool of attackers. It also means that even low-skill actors become dangerous when guided by experienced leaders. Language is a factor in these rooms. English dominates, but many rooms operate in Russian, Arabic, Spanish, and other languages. Language choice creates sub-communities and specialized markets. Time zones matter too. Some rooms are active 24-7 across continents. Others focus on regional targets where local knowledge pays off. Monetization in chat rooms extends beyond tool sales. Participants trade stolen personal information for fraud. They sell access to corporate systems. They sell promotional shout-outs from compromised influencer accounts. Money laundering conversations occur in private channels. Buyers ask how to convert cryptocurrency into usable cash. Sellers recommend services and techniques. That sharing of laundering tips enables successful monetization. Given this structure, how do these rooms influence real-world crime? They lower the barrier to attack. They improve coordination. They speed up the life cycle from theft to monetization. A stolen data list once sat in a private chat for one hour. Within two days, multiple buyers used parts of it to attempt fraud. The time from breach to exploitation has never been shorter. Why do certain chat rooms become popular? Quality of goods, reputation of sellers, reliability of delivery. If a room consistently provides valuable data, buyers congregate there. Some rooms specialize. One might sell only financial access. Another markets corporate credentials. This specialization creates focused ecosystems where buyers know what to expect. Moderation differs between rooms. Some run strict rules against scams or low-quality goods. Others tolerate chaotic trading to encourage volume. The moderation style impacts long-term sustainability. What about the content moderation on the other side? Law enforcement and security researchers. They study these rooms intensively. Researchers sometimes infiltrate them to map behavior. Ethical questions arise about what data to publish and how to act on it. Companies monitor underground channels for leaked data. They buy their own data to verify breaches and prioritize responses. 
This proactive monitoring helps mitigate damage faster. You might wonder, can these chat rooms be closed? Short answer, sometimes, but not permanently. When a large market is taken down, others appear. The ecosystem is resilient because demand persists. That means defense must focus on the user and the target. Hardening systems and educating people reduce the market. If fewer accounts are easy to access, the rooms lose value. So where should individuals start? First, treat passwords as sacred. Use unique, strong passwords for every account. Use a reputable password manager to store them. Second, enable strong multi-factor authentication. Prefer authenticator apps or hardware tokens over SMS-based codes. SMS is vulnerable to SIM swapping and interception. Third, minimize the permissions you grant to apps. A camera or microphone permission is powerful. Only grant necessary permissions to trusted apps. Fourth, keep devices and software up to date. Many exploit kits target unpatched systems. Patching reduces the number of vulnerabilities available. Fifth, check account activity regularly. Look for unfamiliar devices or login alerts. Revoke sessions you don't recognize. Sixth, be skeptical of urgent requests. Phishing messages often create panic. Slow down, verify through official channels. Seventh, secure your home network. Change default router passwords, use strong Wi-Fi encryption. Segment IOT devices on a guest network. Eighth, back up important data. Ransomware thrives when backups are absent. Regular offline backups reduce the leverage attackers have. Ninth, be cautious with free tools and crack software. Those packages can hide malware that leads to your data being sold in chat rooms. Tenth, monitor your accounts for exposure. Use reputable breach checking services to see if your email appears in leaks. Beyond individual steps, organizations have additional measures. Implement least privilege across services. Limit who can approve changes and access critical systems. Monitor logs for anomalous behavior. Rapid logins from new geography or unusual workflows should trigger alerts. Use endpoint detection that looks for behavior, not just signatures. Modern malware changes quickly. Behavioral detection helps catch new variants. Train employees regularly on phishing and social engineering. Simulated exercises help build muscle memory for suspicious requests. When a breach or suspicious activity occurs, act fast. Contain the affected systems. Change passwords and revoke tokens from a secure device. Notify relevant stakeholders and law enforcement. Reporting breaches to authorities and industry groups helps stop wider abuse. Shared intelligence can lead to coordinated takedowns or prevention of fraud. Let's return to the chat rooms for a moment. They adapt to defenses. When platforms close, new options open. When a trade route is blocked, sellers create another. But over time, increased friction raises the cost of crime. Better security reduces the volume of low-hanging fruit. That shifts the market toward more sophisticated actors, which is both good and bad. Good, because casual criminals struggle. Bad, because sophisticated actors are harder to stop. So the middle ground is prevention and resilience. Reduce easy targets and prepare to respond when incidents occur. Now, what about media and storytelling around these rooms? Don't sensationalize. Avoid giving specific names, addresses, or step-by-step -step methods. These details can help copycats or provide roadmaps. Instead, focus on behavior and indicators. Show viewers what to watch for and how to react. Educate without empowering. If you are creating content, keep clear disclaimers. State that the material is for awareness and defense. Encourage lawful actions and reporting. Finally, remember the human element. Victims are not just statistics. They are people whose privacy, finances, and dignity can be harmed. When we talk about these chat rooms, we must keep that human cost in view. Hidden chat rooms will continue to exist as long as there is demand. They will evolve, rebrand, and move. But if we harden our personal security and share knowledge responsibly, we reduce what those rooms can sell. Knowledge tells a story. Use it to protect yourself and others. Be suspicious of the urgent message. Be careful with the apps you install. Be deliberate with the permissions you grant. If you suspect your accounts have been exposed, act now. 
change passwords from a secure device. Enable stronger authentication. Inform your bank and relevant services. If you are a content creator, warn your audience without revealing exploit techniques. If you are an organization, treat every alert as real until proven otherwise. Hidden chat rooms thrive on secrecy. Light is their enemy. Share awareness, report crimes, and build systems that make those hidden rooms less profitable. When we combine those, the risk shrinks. When we ignore them, the market grows. Protect what matters. Lock the doors you can control and teach others to do the same.